That was Sneaky Snitch. Free music. You can find it online. It's good stuff. Uh, welcome back to Senge 176. It's going to be a little bit different this year than it was in previous years, obviously. Um, one of the things that we are uh, doing with Zoom that's a little bit different, I've noticed two things that are different. Um, one, I can very quickly get some feedback from everyone. So over in your um, participants window, which if you've never opened the participants window before, uh, at least on uh, PCs, you can hit Alt U and it'll show all of the participants in the meeting. Uh, and you should see a yes and a no um, checkbox that are on there. And if you look near my name under the host, you can see a, a green check on there now or a, a red X on there now. Um, if you can hear me and see me, throw a green check on there just so that I know everybody can see it. I'll put my own green check on there since I can hear and see myself. Cool. Looks like pretty much everybody has it. So if uh, you can't hear me and see me, it sounds like the problem is probably going to be on your end. Um, so just double check your settings on, on your machine because it, it seems to be going okay for, for everybody else. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, is open your um, chat window. Uh, the chat is, I believe, Alt-H. Um, right now, I've restricted the chat so that they all go right to me, um, so you can't chat with anybody else in the group. That's only temporary. Um, I mean, we're not going to have too many of these live lectures anyway, um, but that's to prevent the, the Zoom bombing that's going around right now from uh, people, you know, logging in and, and showing things that shouldn't be shown on a meeting. Um, and I, I, I know from Twitch, people can get very clever in their ASCII art too. So I've, I've disabled uh, chats right now. Um, what I wanna do today is just go over an outline of the course um, and point you in the right direction to figure out what you need to do next. Um, surprisingly enough, the course doesn't have to change too much from what we would have been doing anyway. Um, it had always been the plan of the course to have you complete your fourth experiment as a, a team and then do your fifth experiment for the longer portion of the course individually. So the last like two thirds of this course, you were gonna be doing these experiments individually anyway. Um, the, the parts that have changed are, are obviously now you're gonna do it all individually. Um, a little bit has changed in the sense that we've eliminated the choice of which experiments to do. Um, partly because I don't want to just post a bunch of experiments and have you watch them because um, I think that's kind of boring. Uh, and partly because we were able to get some individual licenses of some really powerful simulation software that has always been a part of the course. Um, and it's always been sort of a, a self-paced experiment that some teams have opted to do. Uh, and so we've taken that experiment and expanded on it uh, for you to do as your um, fifth and final experiment for the course. Um, and so we actually get to do some extra interesting things on there that were usually sort of optional for people who had time to do it, uh, but now we have time to do it. And those tools are really useful, not just for um, simulation style experiments, but for um, any kind of experiment that you would wanna do. Um, so I'm gonna switch over since we are not starting uh, the stream soon. We are actually now in the stream um, over to our Canvas page. Stop sharing computer sound too. Um, so if you navigate over to our Canvas page, oh, by the way, one of the things that I found, I don't have to shush people when they come into the lecture, right? Because you're, <laughs> you're all muted already. Um, if you go over to the uh, syllabus page, um, we'll spend a little bit of time going over the, the syllabus and the logistics of the course. Um, and then I'm just going to show you how to uh, access your homework assignments because there'll be a few more of those than there were previously. Uh, but that too was always going to be part of the class was to sort of divide up the report so that it's not just somebody does the pre-lab and then uh, there's sort of nothing for four weeks or three weeks that you submit and then suddenly there's an entire report due. It was always the plan to chunk up the, the assignments this way. Um, so it's definitely different from what it was in the um, winter quarter, but it's not different from what we would expected, what we had expected to do during the um, spring quarter. By the way, I am recording this from uh, what I'm going to call Studio Winston at my house. Um, I do have two small dogs and they will occasionally uh, make themselves known. Um, if they happen to wander by, I'll, I'll try and pick them up and 
put them on screen for you. Um, but if I suddenly mute the mic and, and turn around and look like I'm yelling at someone, um, I'm just trying to get them quiet. Um, so hopefully they won't do that. Looking at the, the syllabus, uh, we do have a daily schedule. Um, it's not quite as detailed as it needed to be for last quarter. Uh, so if you can expand the daily schedule here, and I'll just point out um, some of the details of it. It's pretty simple. Everybody's running all of the experiments uh, individually and all of the assignments individually. So it doesn't matter what team you were on before. Uh, in fact, it, it really matters even less now when your um, assigned lecture period is, um, because most of those due dates aren't going to matter. Um, we are currently in the introduction lecture right here. I've tried to note um, over on the side uh, which lectures are going to be live and which lectures are going to be pre-recorded. It's less so that they're they're like lecture lectures, and it's more uh, in a lot of cases. I'm just going to, well, I guess in half of the cases or so. I'm going to post videos of me doing the experiments that you're interested in, which we almost couldn't do. Um, for, I guess, details that I won't go into, it's not the first time that I've gone onto a campus late at night and jacked some lab equipment. Fortunately, I have that experiment experience. So I have about $30,000 worth of our lab equipment sitting down in the garage so that I can actually do these experiments, um, which was different. It's been a while since I've been on campus at like 930 at night in the rain taking equipment out of a lab, but there you go. You never know when that PhD will come back and help you. Um, the other thing that we've got here are several homework assignments um, with a post date and a due date. Uh, and so post just means that's the time when they'll be available on our Canvas page. Uh, and the due date is just that, when are they due. Um, they're all due at 11 o'clock p.m. on the date that's noted here. Uh, and we've got a couple of them, right? And they're going to build up. One of the things that uh, is noted a little bit further down on the syllabus is that these dates are subject to change but they will never be accelerated. So the only thing that we will ever do is go as quickly as what's noted here. Uh, we will never speed that up. If anything, the only thing that we'll do is sort of push the dates back um, to give us a little bit more breathing room. Um, there will be uh, written reports for the uh, two experiments you're doing this quarter. So that corresponds to written report four and written report five because the numbering keeps going from what it was uh, in the um, fall quarter or sorry, the winter quarter. Um, and then only for report five will you have an oral presentation. And so those will be um, recorded by you and, and submitted for us to evaluate. Um, and then you can see there's a fair amount of space after we finish um, what would be sort of an overview of the LPCVD reactor. Uh, and this section here, when you get through seven through 10, um, that's where you're gonna be doing sort of the last experiment. Uh, weeks four through seven or four through six, um, we're gonna be kind of guiding you through some of the homework problems to learn how to use the software uh, and how to do some additional analyses uh, that are again, the ones I was referring to that are useful for any experiment. They're not just useful for I need to do an LPCVD reactor in, in COMSOL. Um, and that's actually part of what I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Usually we don't have time to do something like this, um, and we do this time. Um, so that I think is gonna be really beneficial for you um, going forward. Um, grading for the course, it's going to be a mixture of those homeworks and reports weighted a little bit more towards the reports, um, but that's something that uh, Dr. Opakowitz and I are, are finalizing. We will have it posted right here on the Canvas page no later than like midnight tomorrow, um, so you're not going to be you know, trying to wonder how much is everything worth. Um, all of your assignments um, are going to be submitted through Gradescope, um, which is I, I've been teaching for something like six years or something. I have very rarely been so excited about grading. Uh, and this is how I know that I am finally a teacher. Like I self-identify as a teacher. Gradescope is pretty cool. Um, and so we're going to use Gradescope to submit everything. Uh, it really does not take very long. The only requirement for Gradescope is that you submit it as a PDF, but that's what LaTeX does already, right? It already outputs everything as a PDF, um, so we don't have to change very much. You're, you'll just complete your assignments in LaTeX. Um, the submission process is, is usually pretty painless. Um, I've got a little video of it here that uh, Gradescope has posted. It takes like two minutes to submit something. The important part, um, and you'll see it in the video, it's, it's pretty straightforward, is uh, 
tag the problems. So um, it'll just ask you, please click on the play page that corresponds to your answer to like problem three or something like that. You just click on it to let us know where that problem is. Um, that's what I mean by tag the appropriate problems. Uh, and that's again, covered in this uh, video that I've, I've linked here. Um, the modified rubric for the written reports, that's another element where that was going to change anyway. Um, we've already used the modified rubric uh, last year for individual reports. We're just going to use it again um, this year. So it, it's again a, a modification from the winter, but it's not a modification for an online class, right? That's not new for this quarter. We were going to do that anyway. Um, and so we'll, we'll post that, but it's basically the same rubric. You just kind of get rid of some of the um, group parts and the oral presentation and the pre-lab parts because um, those aren't there anymore. Roughly speaking, the organization of the um, course uh, is given on the daily schedule. The first uh, maybe third of the course or so is going to be this new pack packed bed pressure drop experiment. By the way, I have ordered a pop filter. If you don't know what a pop filter is, it's a little mesh that sits right here in front of my microphone. When I say packed bed pressure drop experiment, those P's and B's and things are, are probably fairly loud in the microphone. Um, I have ordered it, it is on the way. All the cool kids are using pop filters, so we will get ourselves a pop filter. Um, so that'll look like uh, homeworks and reports and stuff like that on the pack bed um, experiment. And those will all, all of those experiments, quote unquote experiments, um, will be videos that I post to our Canvas page um, that you'll have to, to walk through um, to get the data out of. Weeks about like four and a half through 10, something like that. That's when we're going to uh, transition over to the low pressure chemical vapor deposition reactor, um, which is abbreviated as um, LPCVD. Uh, and that's a simulation you're going to work through on COMSOL. Um, COMSOL a single license for COMSOL is something like $5,000. Uh, we do have licenses through the um, virtual computing lab. Um, so you can access it through there, but we were actually able to get everyone licenses so that you can install it on your own machine. If you've ever used the virtual computing lab, it's great because it has a lot of really expensive software on it, but it's kind of slow. Um, and it's a little bit hard to move the files back and forth sometimes, and you need the VPN to get into it. Um, we actually have the ability now to have all of you install um, COMSOL directly on your computer so that you can run the LPCVD simulations much more quickly. Um, I say much more quickly, there is actually a trade-off. Uh, if you ever do a huge simulation, it can actually be faster to offload that onto a, like a computational cluster somewhere. Um, we shouldn't be in that regime where it actually becomes faster to use the VPN um, because most of our simulations will stay uh, pretty small. The LPCVD portion of the course in weeks five through 10 will also be where we introduce some of these newer uh, statistical techniques. Uh, and we're also gonna have a brief overview of Excel. Um, I get questions routinely about, um, you know, what programming languages should I learn? Uh, what programming languages are, are in demand? Um, usually couched within a, a question of like, is, do I learn MATLAB or C++ or Python or, or what have you? Um, obviously as a department, we teach you MATLAB and we use MATLAB in all of our courses. Um, but Excel is one thing that you are guaranteed to have access to whenever you go anywhere. Uh, you can also use Google Sheets for a lot of it. So we'll just have a, a brief overview of, of how to use um, basic spreadsheet tools in case you've never used them uh, because they happen to match really nicely with the type of statistical analyses that we're going to teach you in the, the following week. Um, so if you already know Excel fairly well, that'll be an easy one for you. Um, a couple of course resources that you'll need. Um, you should already have MATLAB. Um, if you don't, uh, oops, I forgot to actually link right there. Uh, I will make a note to myself actually right now. Let me make a note to uh, fix that MATLAB link there. MATLAB link. Um, you'll need the VPN. So you won't need the VPN in order to get to the virtual computing lab, but you will need the VPN to do literature searches for your reports. Um, and I'll have a couple of specific questions on various homeworks that will require you to go out and find papers um, in order to use something like the ISI Web of Knowledge or Google Scholar uh, and actually get the reports and not just see the abstracts. Um, you'll have to be logged in through our VPN. Uh, and then you'll have access to all of those. You don't really need to do anything special. Once you're in the VPN, most of the time you just 
go to the page where the um, articles are uh, and you can get them directly. Um, we're still using Overleaf. Everybody should still have access to their um, Overleaf accounts. Um, please let me know if you don't, um, but all of those licenses should still be there. Um, and then there's a, a ComSol license that I've noted here. Um, you just go download it, uh, enter your, uh, sorry, create an account with your UC San Diego email, uh, and then there's a passcode here that you'll be uh, prompted to use um, in the installation partway through. We're not going to get to ComSol until later on in the course, um, so you can wait a little while on ComSol um, unless you want to grab it and, and start uh, playing around with it. Um, but these are the major resources uh, that we're going to need for um, the course. To get any of your um, assignments for the course, actually, I should have closed that. Let's add another comment here. Remove assignments from Canvas. Um, in a few minutes, you will no longer be able to see this assignments link on here. Most of them, or I should say all of them, uh, you'll be able to get to uh, through the modules page here. Um, the Zoom meeting info, anytime we have a, a live lecture, um, the info will be posted here in, in one way or another. You can always click on this if you hadn't before. Um, that actually takes you to a, a short little page here with additional information. Um, but it's, I find it easier to just post it in the the name right here. Uh, and then there's going to be two modules. So there'll be a module for the pack bed pressure drop. Um, and so you can see there's a homework assignment sitting here. All of the videos, any data, any links to useful resources that we need, um, they're all going to be available within the pack bed pressure drop resource module. Uh, and then later on in the course, when we get up to around weeks three or four or so, um, I'll add an additional model module here that will be for the LPCVD reactor, uh, and that will just cover all of the, the material um, that we'll need. And it'll build up over time. Um, so, excuse me, there will be more and more things um, that we'll put on there. To get the actual homework assignment, you would just click on it here, um, and then there'll be a little link inside. Should be. There's no link right there. We'll add that. Add homework link. I don't think that I can actually add that link right now um, because if I add that link, it'll kick me out of here. Um, but I can show you um, the first homework. Let's get that one going. Eventually, there will be a link on our Canvas page right here. And I'm, when I say eventually, I mean in about 15 minutes or so. Um, so let's show what this homework looks like. This is uh, homework one, so I'll give you a, a brief LaTeX template up at the top, um, and you'll have a fair amount of experience, I think, with this course by the time we're done creating these, so you may not need the template anymore. Um, I may add packages as we go, but we just need the basics of pick the font, um, make sure we can use images if we need to, give us some math, uh, and give us the ability to use both units in SI and any chemistry formulas um, that we need to. Um, and then I've given you one additional trick here that we didn't go over uh, last year, or sorry, last quarter. It's often easier instead of doing these equa equation environments with their own begin equation, end equation kind of thing, there's a shortcut to that uh, that just uses these uh, sort of backslash open bracket and backslash close bracket, and they produce exactly the same outputs. Um, and so part of what you're going to be doing in your assignments is you know, showing that one equation becomes something else. Um, so for example, in this first assignment, uh, you're gonna be working with this manometer, uh, which is the very same manometer that we're using on the um, experiment itself. Uh, and these questions would be along the lines of what would a pre-lab question look like for this experiment? Uh, and so the, the first question is, you know, the entire instrument obviously fits within a room. And so I want you to show uh, that the pressure at point two is about the same as pressure at point one, right? So pressure at point uh, one is up here and pressure at point two is down here. Show that those are the same, right? That's going to require you to do some math. Um, and so you're going to have to enter the equations that you're doing uh, this way. Uh, and it's, it's just faster to enter them this way than it is to uh, use the begin equation, end equation environments every single time you want to. Um, 
And so you'll complete each of the assignments that are on here, not unlike the usual assignments. Uh, you can always see their point values uh, and the diamonds indicate roughly how difficult I think they would be, usually on a scale of how difficult are they in this assignment, not how difficult are they overall in the course. Um, so a three point on this, or a, a three diamond on this experiment uh, is probably not gonna be the same as a three diamond on like the next assignment or um, any assignment thereafter. Um, and much like uh, the pre-lab assignments would be for um, the normal class, uh, it's up to you to, to work them out. There's, there's not like a lot of lectures or anything. In fact, there are no lectures where I'm gonna demonstrate sample calculations for something like this, right? It's all drawing on things that you would have learned it at some point um, during the, the um, program that you've gone through here um, as part of chemical engineering. So, you know, we're dealing with things like um, pressure drop, friction factors, uh, et cetera. It's not as bad as it looks. Um, it, it really is mostly plug and chug on a lot of this with the exception of these two where you have to actually derive something. But for the most part, this one is, is primarily plug and chug. Um, so that'll be the, the first homework. When it then comes time to actually submit that homework, uh, let me switch back over to our Canvas page here. The um, procedure for submitting the homework is again through Gradescope, and I've linked to that exact same video right here. Uh, and so to submit through Gradescope, you'll click on Gradescope here um, in the Canvas page. This is the only part I can't actually demonstrate to you um, because Gradescope doesn't allow me to do a sample submission, um, but essentially you'll click on Gradescope, you'll see a page that looks something like this. Uh, you'll go to 176B uh, and the homework assignment will be sitting here. Um, and you'll click on the homework one. Right now it says nobody has submitted anything because you're seeing it in the um, faculty view. Uh, and so you can't, I, I can't show you what that submission uh, procedure would, would look like because um, it always just looks like it's expecting faculty to do something. Uh, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. The whole video walkthrough for it's only about two minutes. Um, so it, it doesn't take um, too much to, to submit anything. So let's head back to the um, syllabus. Uh, most of us should have, oh, you already used it in MAE 170. Cool. Um, somebody messaged me and said that it was uh, used in MAE 170. Um, you can go to the student view. I, I don't know. Uh, if Dr. O says I can go to the student view, I've never been able to actually get to the student view uh, in here. We'll, we'll figure it out. If we can figure it out, we'll post another video um, of what to do in here. Maybe I'm missing something and there's actually a student view in here. Lower right hand corner. I see this student view, um, but I am currently in the Canvas student view uh, and it always takes me to the live, or sorry, the, the faculty version of this one. Um, another question, do we still have uh, lab sessions or do we watch videos? Uh, a bit of both. Um, so for the, uh, let's go back to the um, syllabus over here. So for weeks one through four, the, the question in chat was, um, do we have lab sessions or do we just watch videos? For weeks one through four, the labs will be done pre-recorded, so you're just gonna be watching videos on that. For the latter part of the course, which is the bigger part of the course from about like four and a half through 10, you're gonna be doing the experiments yourself. They're computational experiments. Um, and that again is not, that's not new for this course. It's not like we had to adjust that because we were, you know, suddenly pressed and we had to come up with a, a version of the lab that can be done online. Um, that's always been a part of the course. So uh, it's a little bit of both. Um, there's that computational part um, where you're gonna be the one doing the experiment, uh, but there's also the uh, watching the video part where I'm the one doing the experiment. Um, there's a pretty fair few number of our faculty too that use Comsol. Um, one of the videos that we have that we may end up posting uh, is the original introduction to Comsol that Dr. Yang uh, created uh, because Dr. Yang used to be part of this course when we had five or six faculty members involved on it. Um, that was, don't think you're missing out. It, it was not a better course when we had five faculty members on it because we had like 240 students. Um, it was really hard to give anybody any kind of individual feedback. But at any rate, uh, Dr. Yang uses Comsol in a fair amount of his research um, and it's very often used in, in publications and stuff like that. It's a very 
uh, powerful piece of software. Um, do we have access to that computational software? You sure do. Um, we have special licenses for it just for you, uh, for our class this quarter. Um, so you can download and install that software on your personal machine. Um, you can always access it through the virtual computing lab as well. I just don't recommend it because it, it's, it's perfectly functional, it's just a little bit slower. Um, and so it, it's sort of like trying to use MATLAB through the, the virtual computing lab. Um, you can do it, but it's faster if you just have your own copy on your own machine. Um, so yes, in response to chat's question, yes, you do have access to that software. Um, you can install it now if you wanna play around with it, um, but we're not gonna need it uh, until about like week four and a half, five, something like that. Are both individual labs. Yes, all the assignments that you're going to do in here are individual, um, which again was always, well, I should say the latter two thirds of the course, the, the lab five that you're going to be doing, the LPCVD one, that was always intended to be individualized. Um, so that, that was not a change from um, winter quarter. Well, it is a change from winter into spring. It's not a change because we're doing this course remotely, it was always going to be that way. It is a change for you to do the, the fourth experiment, the pack bed experiment, um, to do that one individually. That's, that's different. Um, so yeah, that part's new. But they're, yes, they are both um, individual labs. Uh, so that is um, all of the, the major elements that I wanted to, to go over for today. Our calculations need to be on, done on LaTeX for our homeworks. Yes, you need to enter your work into LaTeX as an equation. I don't, it, it's very inconvenient to actually do any of the derivations within LaTeX. It's very hard to manipulate equations in there. So I still suggest you get like a pencil and paper um, to write down the, the derivations for the course um, or for the assignments, but I don't recommend that you um, try to do the actual derivations in LaTeX. Only after you've got the equations done, then put them into LaTeX. Um, and so this is a motivation for you to, to um, simplify your work as much as possible. Most of the derivations should not take more than maybe half a dozen equations, something like that. They're, they're not particularly lengthy. Um, another question, can we pass no pass this class? Uh, at the moment, no. I, as far as I understand, our department is not allowing any of these courses to switch to pass no pass. Um, it, it enters, it, it kind of builds up a lot of problems in terms of uh, things that you might need after you graduate, um, but there are sort of pros and cons to both sides of it. As soon as I find out more about what the department allows, I will tell you. Um, but as far as we know, this class is going to go on the standard ABCF grading um, that we used previously. That said, even in normal situations, um, it's pretty hard to fail this class. Uh, most of the time, the only way that somebody fails this class is if you cheat. Uh, and so cheating means things like all of the academic integrity things that we went through um, last quarter are obviously still in effect. So there's no plagiarism. Uh, there's no posting your work to Chegg and getting somebody else to solve it and then you copying it and then we find it on Chegg. Um, those are usually the only ways that um, people will fail the course. Uh, so I please don't lose sleep about um, this is going to be an extra hard course because of the remote uh, nature of it. It will have certain things that are different, um, but I think, at least from my view, we haven't had to make too many changes to it. Um, most of it is done asynchronously anyway, uh, so it, it, it's going to behave a fair amount like a, a normal um, lab would look. The difference being you're not showing up in the lab, you're watching me do the, the videos. Um, beyond those videos, the vast majority of this looks pretty much the same as it would anyway. Um, so we're a little bit early. We've, we've still got another, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, but I, I hadn't planned to use the entire um, course. The next thing that you should do, um, obviously check out the syllabus, make sure you have access to that. Get any of the uh, software on here that you don't have, although you can wait on Comsol, we don't need it immediately. Um, and then homework one will be posted um, like I said, I have to fix up that link. Uh, it will be posted in here under the modules page um, and you can get started on that right away. The due date for homework one, if you wanna know uh, when the due dates are, they're all given in the daily schedule. Um, and so you'll see that the due date for homework one, let's zoom in here a little bit, slide over. 
uh, is right here. So homework one has already been posted uh, and it'll be due at 11 p.m. Uh, what is that? Next Thursday um, is the next one. Yeah, here. Or sorry, next Tuesday. So you've got a little over a week, well, you know, a week and six hours or something like that um, to do the first homework assignment and then submit that through um, grade scope, uh, and then you'll just be able to kind of hang out, right? Again, not unlike what the normal class would be if you finish the pre-lab the pre-lab questions, then you don't have much to do um, until the next uh, portion of the class. So I'm going to hang out for a little while um, until, I don't know, more or less everybody decides to either stay or leave. Um, I am available in chat. Um, let me double check. Uh, yeah, Dr. Opakowitz is also in chat, so you can um, message him directly. I'm going to uh, sort of release the uh, chat part here so that you can chat with other people. Um, so you can send either public or private messages. Um, and I'll just hang out for a little while uh, and answer any questions um, that you might have. But I'm not going to introduce any new material for the course. So if you're in good shape, um, feel free to take off. And I will continue to record this all the way through while I'm answering questions. Um, so you can always check it. Oh, I guess I didn't miss that, or I did forget that. Uh, all of the uh, lectures will be posted in that modules page. Um, so this is being actively recorded by Zoom right now, and those lectures will get posted to their um, proportional view, or their um, appropriate module. Um, can you explain again what is happening to the fourth group member presentation? There's no presentation for the fourth experiment. Um, there will be a presentation for the fifth one where you will record it uh, and upload it. Um, this again is something that we have done previously. It's been a part of 124 for a while. Um, we're just going to kind of hijack their routine and make it ours. Um, can we see your dogs right now since there's extra time? I'm so glad you asked. Wait here. Wait a minute, let's put some uh, music on. Oh, I can't get the music on. Uh, we'll do it later. Hold on. So for the recorded, is it PowerPoint video? How should we present them? Uh, we'll have a, a brief lecture or I'll upload some videos on different ways that you can record your own presentations. Um, Basically, any way that you can get yourself in front of a camera that we can hear you will work. So, excuse me. So we've had uh, students use their iPhones and just sort of set it in front of them and record themselves that way. Um, you do all have uh, Zoom right now along with your uh, webcams and presumably a microphone. Um, and so you can record them with Zoom the same way that I'm recording them right now. Um, there's a, a few different ones. Um, is it right that both lab reports will be done individually? Yes, everything in here is now individual. There's no team assignments. Um, so everything's individual. Hold on, I'll go see if the, the boys are downstairs. Okay, so this is Winston. This is his studio too. Oh, sorry, Winston, I'll poke you up here. Uh, Winston is two. He was a rescue from OC. Uh, he was a little guy who was apparently out roaming the streets up in Orange County. Um, he's two years old, he loves to play. Uh, he's the one that you will probably hear. If we ever hear anybody barking, it's probably because he's instigating a fight with somebody outside. He's a little bit sleepy right now. Um, because he was nap, he likes to sit up here. Oh, thank you, Winston. Thank you. That's very nice. Um, he likes to nap behind me, so I'm gonna put him down. You can go back to bed. Thank you, Winston. Um, the other one is is named Mir. Uh, he's 13 years old. He doesn't come up very often. He's he prefers to lounge in the sunlight downstairs. But if Mir comes around, um, I'll show you Mir too. You're welcome. Um, can you explain again when the pre-lab for the pack bed pressure drop will be due? Well, so I, I just in terms of uh, terminology there, it, it's not technically a pre-lab, it's effectively a pre-lab, but it's listed as homework one. Um, and so the due date for homework one, in fact, the, the due dates for all uh, 
materials will be available on the daily schedule. So that's in our syllabus page. Uh, and it's, they're all due at 11 p.m. on the date that's indicated on here. So if you go to this uh, homework column here, let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, the homework column is showing you when is that homework posted and then when is it due. So homework one, the one that's um, posted now, or like I said, the one that will be posted here in a matter of minutes, um, will be due on this entry, which if you were to scroll over to the left, you would see this next Tuesday. Uh, and so it's due at 11 p.m. on Tuesday. That one, that also corresponds to the same date that the second homework will be posted. Um, but there, there's gonna be overlap there because usually they'll be posted at the beginning of the day, but none of the homeworks are due, or in fact, none of the assignments at all are due until 11 p.m. that day. Uh, and the reason that they're all due at 11 p.m., which is a little bit different, is because we have to be able to run the course asynchronously. Um, some of the, our students, some of your peers um, are in different time zones. Uh, and so we have to leave a, a pretty wide window there uh, in terms of when people can submit things. Some of us are using ComSol for 124. Can you suggest any resources for getting familiar with it? You know, that's one of the downsides of, of ComSol. The learning curve on it is, is fairly high. The ones that I usually suggest, and in fact, the ones that will show up on your homework assignments um, are the ways that I typically recommend that uh, people get started learning new software or new languages or something like that, uh, which is do something that you already know the answer to. Um, and so that comes back to, you know, dig up your fluid mechanics course uh, and say, you know, what's, what's the flow profile inside of a pipe or something like that. Something that you already know the answer to and that you can actually calculate um, directly. And then look for uh, tutorials on YouTube or something like that that go over it. Um, they may use a slightly different interface, but it's kind of like MATLAB where the core features haven't changed for, you know, 10 years or something like that. So it might take a little bit of extra, you know, maybe the button used to be over here and now it's over there. Um, but my strong recommendation is do a problem that you already know the answer to. Um, so you can do like reactor type problems. The, those are a little bit different because you have to just solve the math directly. Um, but then the majority of the time, you know, the the it's the workflow that you're trying to get to um, that takes the longest. And so that's what the YouTube videos help with because they show you which buttons to click. Uh, and then the other part that takes a little while is how do I get the data out? Uh, and that's where having a problem that you can actually solve by hand comes in so useful. So things like you know flow profiles through tubes, pressure drops across tubes, um, that kind of stuff in fluid mechanics is, is really good. Heat transfer through solids. Um, time dependent things if, if you want to do that. You know, basic like one dimensional type problems where you've already got a work solution. Um, you can just pick up a fluid mechanics book, flip to a Navier-Stokes section and, you know, try and build that model inside of Comsol. Um, and that's usually what I, I do that for. Um, for Comsol, do we need to attend lab at a specific time? No, those will be uh, recorded much like this lecture is. So they will be live if you want to um, show up and, and watch them live and have a chance to directly ask me questions one on one. Um, but you don't have to show up because they're going to be recorded. Um, that's actually a really good question because that brings up two more things. Um, the remaining live lectures beyond today, we're only going to do one of those because it's exactly the same lecture both times. And we finally have the ability for everyone to be here. Um, except that some of you may have conflicting lectures uh, at, for another class that happens to be at, at this particular time. Um, so I'm gonna send out, or either myself or Dr. Opakowitz is gonna send out a survey and find out when the best time for that lecture is. Um, and so you'll, you'll have um, an opportunity there to tell us what time is, is best for you. And then the other thing, what was the other thing that I was gonna say? It was about lectures. Um, Oh, office hours. Um, likely what I will do, if you haven't noticed, you're probably getting a ton of emails right now from lots of different things. Uh, and one of the things that's really frustrating with emails when you're trying to set up a schedule is all the back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. Um, I generally won't just sit here for a given amount of time. What I'll do is 
put a lot of times available on a Google Calendar and give you the link to the Google Calendar. I'll just post it right on the course syllabus. Um, and you'll just be able to go in there and check like, yes, I would like to attend this little meeting portion right here. Um, and I'll just send you a link around that time uh, to have a little one-on-one -on -one office hours with me. Um, that way we don't have to go back and forth and back and forth about the, the meetings. I'll just check my meetings every day. And if anybody has signed up for a particular meeting slot, um, then we'll show up and have a meeting. Um, so it'll actually give you a little bit more flexibility because you won't have this back and forth of, of Comsol where my schedule is changing what, or back and forth of email where my schedule is changing and your schedule is changing, we're trying to fix that up. Um, you'll just be able to pick the time that you want to talk to me uh, within like a, probably a 12 or 24 hour period. Um, you know, you, you won't probably won't just be able to say, I need to talk to you in the next 15 minutes. The schedule will probably be full. So you'll have to, to spread it out a little bit. Um, what is Comsol typically used for? Any specific industries? Holy, yeah, that's a great question. What do you use Comsol for? What industries use it? Almost anything for which there is a, fund, a physical model for it uses Comsol at some level. Uh, so for example, I, I, my experience with Comsol was in um, two different fields. I used it for fluid mechanics to, to model fluid flows through microfluidic channels. Uh, and then I used its electromagnetics uh, a lot, coupled with fluid flow uh, in order to, to model how a, a flame behaves inside of an electric field. That's one of the great things about Comsol is it's, you can kind of drag and drop these different physics. So for example, if you are um, I think one of the 124 projects that we had last year that you might have this year is uh, modeling heat transfer on the backside of a solar cell. Uh, and so you can use things like the heat transfer model to sort of see how heat is being transferred. And then you can couple it with a fluid mechanics model to show the actual flow of fluid in response to that heat transfer. Um, and so you can solve really complicated problems in a large variety of fields uh, because the physics already exists for a lot of those. Um, and so it, it, the question is more, is probably better phrased, what's Comsol typically not used for? It's not used for uh, fields where you don't really need a, a, a physical model for it. So if, if the core of your field is not some sort of a conservation equation, um, then you probably can't use it. So for example, pure math would not use Comsol for anything. They might use it for like a, a PDE solver because it does have a pretty powerful PDE solver, but they've probably got their own stuff for that. Virtually any kind of engineering that you can think of can be modeled inside of, of Comsol. Um, it's just a question of finding the right physics packages um, and using them. So it's, I guess, a follow-up to that question, you know, any specific industries that it's useful for, it's useful for industries that are in sort of the R&D portion of the, the industry. So a company that is doing R&D would use Comsol. You would not use Comsol, for example, as you know, a, a control suite for a process that exists out on a factory floor somewhere. Um, it's, it's not that kind of, of work. Um, it, it doesn't interface with you know, equipment or anything like that. It's a computational package. You're welcome. Um, now that we don't have presentations, do we have lectures every Tuesday or Thursday or not? Um, no, generally you don't have them every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, again, we, we didn't change the, the course that much from what we would have normally done um, for the course. And so the uh, lectures are, maybe I should reword this. It's called style here on the um, syllabus, but you can see as to whether or not the lecture is going to be live or pre-recorded. Um, obviously this one I am currently doing live. I'm gonna post pre-recorded lectures on Tuesday, April 7th, Thursday, April 9th, and Tuesday, April 14th. Um, so those will be sort of the experiment lectures uh, that we have. Um, and then Dr. Opekowitz and I are, are still figuring out, right now they're all scheduled for live um, out here and we'll probably keep some of them live. Maybe we'll switch to some of them pre-recorded. Uh, for an intro to Excel, the 2K analysis is the new one that, that I'm kind of excited about because it's such a powerful technique 
whether you're using a, a simulation to do your experiment or if you're doing a, a physical experiment, 2K analysis is a really useful tool um, to answer a really simple but profound question, which is which of these parameters are important? Um, it's a simple question to ask, but it's harder to answer. Uh, and so these uh, sort of quote unquote lectures are currently scheduled to be live. Um, we're going to send out a, a survey in a little while that asks you a time for those because we're not going to duplicate them. We're not, we're not going to do them back to back. Um, and then beyond that, once we get past like weeks, you know, into weeks eight through 10, it's the same as we would normally do in the, the class where we don't have any lectures. Um, you, you obviously don't, please do not show up to the lab. I have no idea how strict the campus security is being right now, um, but nobody's supposed to be on campus right now unless you're, I, I actually saw a picture. People are getting badges with a little E on them um, that says that you are essential personnel, um, which means that they're supposed to leave you alone. Don't go to lab. Um, nowhere in any of this course are you expected to be in lab. And under this style heading, which I think I'll go back in and change to lecture style, um, that's telling you whether or not you have a, um, oh, you got an essential badge? They didn't give me one. <sighs> Whatever, I'm gonna print my own. Um, or don't print your own, that's, that's wrong. Um, so there's only a handful of lectures, uh, which again is not unlike what it would have been normally. So no, we do not have a lecture every Tuesday and Thursday. Just request, oh, I'm gonna add that to my to-do list. To-do, become essential, ta-da. Um, when's the oral presentation due? Same time as written report? Uh, yes. So the oral presentation, there's only one of them. It's only for the, the fifth and final um, experiment, which is due way out here. Uh, so it's due at 11 p.m. on the same date that the written report is due, which is also due at 11 p.m. Um, they're, they're all due out there. You're welcome. Have you been doing anything fun during quarantine? Yes. So I watch um, streamers on Twitch semi-regularly. And so I've been going through some of their uh, profiles and looking at what kind of equipment they have. Um, because how to do a good stream is a solved problem. Like there are good streamers out there. Um, and so that's where sort of this area came from. There's you know ring lights that are set up here. I've got a nice microphone still waiting on that pop filter. Um, that one's coming out. but surprisingly enough the most fun that i've had for the at least for the course has been grade scope like i it's like i told you before this is it's like you know how you've become a teacher is when you're excited about the ability to grade things oh god grade scope is so good um i'm re actually really looking forward to doing this um it's it's going to be pretty nice stuff. Um, and then, you know, like like I said, lifting $30,000 worth of equipment, equipment from a lab at, you know, 930 at night in the rain. Uh, that was fun. I'm not going to lie. That was, that was fun. Um, you know. Yeah, this is, this is just us. Don't, don't worry that you may like, love LaTeX or you may hate LaTeX. Maybe you'll end up liking it a lot. Uh, you got to go pretty deep into something before you get really excited about how to grade things. I'm fairly confident I'm not going to infect you with my enthusiasm for grading, but it's pretty great. And then I've been playing video games a lot because it's inside. I play um, a modified version of Diablo 2, which came out in 1999, um, but it's still amazing. Do I stream on Twitch? I've thought about it. I honestly don't know whether or not I'm allowed to stream on Twitch, because if I was going to stream on Twitch, I would use the same equipment, uh, and I, I don't know that the university allows me to use this equipment for personal use. I could always just like hang a little post-it on the back of here and say, like, not university equipment, but... That would be untrue. Um, do you stream? No. Yeah, mostly Diablo 2. I finished up um, Breath of the Wild, which was amazing. Um, but I haven't played that one lately. 
Um, when did I realize I wanted to be a professor and teach? Uh, it was trial and error. So it, it's a little bit of, um, actually, I shouldn't say it's even a little bit. By far, I, I find out the things that I like more often by trying things and realizing that I don't like them. Uh, and it kind of narrows down the field. So sort of my path to becoming a, a teacher was I was doing my um, bachelor degree and we had what they called a, a co-op program, which is like a, a, an internship um, in the middle of your program between your junior and senior year. And so I went out and worked for a polymer company for a year. Um, and I thought that that was going to be what I wanted to do until I actually got out there and I realized, like, I actually really like the book stuff. Like, I love, you know, the, the process of starting from a set of assumptions and showing what the, the trend ought to be, right? Linking paper to a number that I read on a dial somewhere. I, I thought that was amazing. Uh, and I didn't get to do that a lot. And that pushed me towards graduate school. And then I got into graduate school and I tried a couple of different things. I, I tried some thermodynamic simulations, which is computational thermodynamics. God bless the people that can do it because it's like really high end math with really abstract thermo, um, which is fantastic. I, I had a lot of fun with it for a while, but ultimately it wasn't what I do, wanted to do. So, you know, it, it's tried the working in industry and didn't like it, tried the computation and didn't like it. I got into the experimental side and I really liked it. Um, and so I wanted to become a faculty member, but then I realized how much grant writing and uh, um, publications you have to do for something like that. And it, it felt like I, I was very blessed to be able to watch a lot of different faculty members at a lot of different uh, stages in their career. And I saw that it just kind of kept going. Like, unless you can become George Whitesides where people just throw money at you. Um, I, I didn't really like what I saw over there, but I loved teaching. So I was a TA as often as I could be. Um, I took all sorts of workshops and, and special classes that helped me learn how to uh, teach people more effectively. Um, and so that's when I started to look more for where are the positions that I can go where I'm just gonna teach. Um, and I say just gonna teach, not like, oh, you just teach or something like that. It's, that's what I wanted to do, right? That's what I found was my passion after eliminating all of this other stuff. So that pointed me in the direction of more like four-year universities, universities that um, had an emphasis on their undergraduate degree program. Um, and this one came across my desk, um, sort of, you know, don't, don't think that those spam emails don't work. They totally work. Um, this particular position here, the LPC, LPSOE position, uh, is almost unique to UC San Diego. I had people at Penn State faculty members that I worked with saying like, I have no idea what your job is because I've never heard of anything like this before. Um, it's, it's a really great position that they've got out here. Um, and so that, that led me out here. Um, favorite class to teach? Uh, I'm going to give the cheesy answer of uh, which, whichever one I'm, I'm teaching here, uh, whichever one I'm teaching now. What's LPSOE? Uh, lecturer with p potential security of employment, which means you teach and you get tenure. Uh, it's exactly the, it's perfectly parallel to what every other teacher does or what every other faculty member does, um, but that's it. It, it. They just have a different name from it. Yeah, that's true. You don't have a lot of complex differential equations. <laughs> Absolutely, hashtag Navi Stokes. Um, any tips or pointers for to be graduate students? Um, pick a language and learn it really well. Uh, don't worry too much about whether or not the coding language that you pick is the one that the group uses. It probably will not be. Uh, you can pick Python and you'll get stuck in a C++ group or you'll pick, you're probably pretty good at MATLAB at this point, so I would build on that. Um, learn that language inside and out. The hard part is not the syntax. The syntax will come to you pretty quickly. The hard part is how do I translate my problem solving thoughts into code? Um, and that, that procedure is the same across all of the languages. So, so pick one and, and, and learn it. Um, and don't worry too much about your, your grades at any particular time. Um, most of those grades are set for like thresholds. Like if you meet the threshold, they just kind of get your application and they, they go on with it, right? They're, it's very rare that you say, you know, two students are identical, except this one's got a 3.3 and this one's got a 3.31. I'm taking the 3.31 or the 3.4 or something like that. Um, don't, don't stress too much about your, your GPA. Just meet the, the threshold for it. Do I prefer to teach class online or in class? Um, a bit of both. It, uh, I don't know. I 
yeah, a bit of both. It depends. Um, you're welcome for the answer. I wonder if I can get, oh yeah, cool. Okay, so I should be able to share that music now. Uh, When you say learn a language for grad school, are you talking about chemical engineering grad school? Oh, no, any, well, learn a language if you're going to go do a STEM uh, graduate field, uh, which is not at all uh, required. I, several of your peers that have gone through the program have gone to things that are outside of STEM, uh, so you know, several that have gone to law school. Um, you have an amazing background if you were ever interested in anything to do with uh, law in the STEM field. Um, you've got a great background for that. Medical school, uh, boy, I don't know, practice your short-term memory because there is a ton of memorization for med medical school as I hear it. Um, no, when I say learn a language, I'm referring to if, if you go into a STEM field, um, you're going to need some kind of language sooner or later. And law tech, use law tech. Dollar says you can get your faculty, your PI to switch over to LaTeX. I was able to get my PI to switch over to LaTeX. Now he does everything on Overleaf too. Oh yeah, business school too, definitely. They, it, there's, you have a really great degree in terms of flexibility to going to um, different uh, places. Should we pass the FE in order to get a job? How please? Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of knowledge about the, the FE exam in order to get a job. But usually, no, you don't need an FE exam to, to get a job. Um, it, it can definitely be helpful in terms of, you know, putting things on your resume. But I, unfortunately, I don't know a lot about the, the FE exam. So I would rather say nothing than give you bad information. I would say study and look for the job at the same time. The, the question was, should I um, take the FE exam first and then get a job or should I do them in parallel? I'd say do them in parallel. What's the advantage of doing a PhD directly versus doing a master's and then a PhD? Uh, the difference is you. Um, some programs require their students to do a master's degree first. The majority of the time though, they're, they're sort of like parallel tracks. The master's degree is a good way for you to find out whether or not you want to do a PhD. So often you can get into a master's degree program and still do research with a PI. Uh, it's much more coursework heavy uh, than the PhD. The PhD is much more on the research side. Um, but for the most part, the, the, if your intent is to eventually get a PhD, there's not really much of an advantage of getting the master's as well unless you're not entirely sure. Um, and then the masters can serve as a good way for you to sort of put a stopping point on it that says, I, may, I, I don't have to get through three years and find out that I absolutely hate this and then get out with nothing. Um, there are many other uses for the master's degrees program, but that's what I mean if, when I say, if you are 
really interested in the PhD, then the only use for the master's is sort of to decide whether or not you want to do the PhD. Um, the problem with that is it can be a little bit difficult depending on which university you go to uh, to find the same levels of funding so they may offer for example at, at UCSD as far as I know we offer very little funding for master's degree students but PIs will offer funding for PhD students um, so if you're self-funded it really doesn't matter at all um, but if you're getting funding from either the university or the the faculty member doing the research they're usually interested in PhD students or, or I should say like PhD or students who are applying to a PhD. Um, what would I say about taking a job that isn't necessarily chemi? Take it, um, definitely. Uh, I, I wouldn't say don't take it for, I think anything, I, I would take it. Do we know how many students go to computer science for graduate school? I do not. I don't know what that breakdown is. Actually, you could go ask our CSE department. They should be able to pull all of the uh, degrees um, of their current students and find out where they came from. I mean, I say they should be able to do that whether or not they want to is a different matter. I don't know if they have to do it by hand or what. Um, but no, I, I don't have an answer to that question. Yeah, the, the, uh, I think piggybacking on what Dr. O said, that's what I had just described in my path, right? I just, I took the first uh, industry job that I could find, the, the one in the polymer company as part of my internship you will learn a lot no matter where you go. And a lot of what you can learn that is the most important to you is what elements of that job do you like and what elements do you not like? Maybe you love, I mean, maybe you get, you know, the golden egg and that's the, where you want to be for the rest of your life. Kind of unlikely, but possible. More than likely though, you'll say, okay, now I know what I'm really interested in. There was some small portion of what I'm doing uh, that I was interested in and it can help you in your, your search, but it's not, it, it'll feel like it's a, a huge commitment, like I, I'm gonna spend my life in this field. It's not the case. Um, you can always change. My music stopped. Please tell me that stuff, by the way, too. Uh, you're gonna notice in some of the videos that I recorded on campus, you can hear the air conditioning. Uh, I am paying attention to all of that, so please tell me if, if anything's not um, right. All right, I think uh, we've kind of slowed down on the questions a little bit. Um, so I think I'm gonna wrap this up for the morning one. I'll be back again at 2 p.m. Um, I'm only gonna do exactly the same things that I did here. Um, so there's no need to attend both of them unless you have more questions that you wanna ask um, or if there's some element that wasn't clear and you just wanna see it again. Um, but otherwise, 
uh, just pay attention to the Canvas page. I will generally try to minimize the number of emails that I send to you. It's probably still going to feel like a lot, um, but for the most part, we'll just follow what's on the daily schedule, um, and that stuff will just be posted directly to Canvas, and, and that way you hopefully will not get a complete deluge of, of emails from, from our class. So thanks all for showing up. I'm going to stop sharing on my side, but I'm going to leave the, the meeting up um, so you'll be able to, to stay inside uh, of the meeting if there's anybody you want to talk to. Okay, no problem, Dr. O. Um, okay, I will see you guys when I see you. Um, like I said, as we get a little bit further, if I do any more live lectures, they won't be quite so buttoned down as this one. It's just to stop the first week Zoom bombers from coming in here. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to chat a little bit more freely um, if we have to then. Thanks all. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and we will see you in class. It's, it's going to be a good one, I promise. Um, we'll see you soon.